All right, Tyler Perry fans, this is it. This is my movie review from Netflix, A Fall from Grace. Now, um, it is Monday when I'm recording this. I actually watched the movie a second time because I figured that with Tyler Perry requesting no spoilers, but going on YouTube yesterday, which was Sunday, and seeing a bunch of people already reviewing the film, I figured, well... I would wait until late Monday or maybe Tuesday, you know, when more people come to this channel due to the haves and the have nots, that I'll post a video then. So, just in case you were unaware, I will be talking spoilers because I honestly don't have time for the whole, oh, let me do a movie that's a reaction, I mean, a video that's a reaction, and then go back and do a spoiler video. Nah, I ain't got time for that. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, um, don't watch the video, but to be completely honest, if you've watched the trailer for Fall from Grace, you kind of already know what happens in the movie. I mean, sure, there are a couple of twists and turns, but overall, if you've watched the trailer, you kind of already saw the movie for the most part. Plus, it is a Tyler Perry film, so to be honest, you know, like I said, maybe one twist or turn and that's it. So... What did I think of the movie? Honestly, yeah, even though this is going to be a spoilerish review, I'm really going to talk more about my overall impressions of the movie as opposed to what happened because the synopsis and trailer say it all. It's all about Grace being arrested for allegedly killing her husband after, you know, after being wined and dined for a couple of months and all of a sudden things turn sour because of his demeanor changing from sweet to sour um, the next thing you know, she's in danger of losing her job and being arrested because the money from her bank accounts are gone because, uh, um, what is it? She works at a bank, uh, and then, you know, finds out her husband is behind it, kills him, gets arrested, and we have a, uh, I guess you could say almost like a rookie attorney trying to take the case in order to, a uh, public defender trying to get a plea deal, uh, for Grace, and then as the movie goes on you know we learn more from sarah aka felicia richard and what exactly went down between grace and uh shannon Sh shannon the name of the new man that she had married and as the movie goes on that's pretty much it but what were my first impressions um I'm not one of those people that automatically went off about the wigs and the things like that because this is a Tyler Perry movie, so you kind of expect it. I will say that it wasn't as distracting to me. It's kind of like, you know, in the haves and the have nots in season five when uh, Jeffrey's hair was kind of like inconsistent in between episodes. And I know people were going on about that. It's something that I look at and go, wait, what? But it's not something that really takes me out of a scene because I've seen a lot of people saying their reviews or people just reacting to the trailer. That was their first thing that caught their attention. Like, um, um, McCod Brooks, you know, the fade and everything is so distracting. And Tyler Perry's wig looks like it's half done and you can see the hair sticking to the head. I'm not that kind of person where that's what I base my impression on the movie on. If the acting is good enough, it's not as distracting. It's still noticeable, but it's still, you know, it. I I get it. I mean, from one standpoint, it's like, okay, Tyler Perry, you got the money and whatnot and the resources you, to make this stuff look better. I will admit that, but it's not something that I base my impression of the movie off of. Um, The film was shot in five days. And it was sort of noticeable. I will say that I feel like this movie flowed a little better than Nobody's Fool. And that movie was filmed in 10 days. I do think that Crystal Fox did amazing. Uh, I really did. It, I mean, if you watch the haves and the have-nots and you see how Hannah suffers on that show, then her suffering in this movie should be pretty familiar. And she plays the role well. And that... I feel like if there's one thing I did enjoy, definitely the cast. Like Matthew Law as uh, Jordan, I remember him in the lackluster role as um what was it Kendrick on The Pains, 
and I praised him on the Oval. And he's only been in a handful of episodes. And I just love in the brief scenes he's gotten in that show, we see more emotion and range from him as we did in this movie. So I do praise the acting. And for Alicia Richard, I mean, do if nothing else, that was the best part of the movie. Um, spoiler alert, she's the villain. And it's kind of like, wow. That really... It really was kind of obvious because if you look at the movie closely, there was a lot of foreshadowing. There really was a lot of foreshadowing. And I mean a lot, as in you were going to be, you were hit over the head with foreshadowing as hard as Grace hit Shannon across the head with the baseball bat. And moving on into the movie, we get to... Okay, there is somebody outside of my window talking. I have no idea what's going on. It is Martin Luther King Day, so buses are not running. Like, literally, why are they standing right there in front of my window? Okay, but in any case, when we get to the part of the movie that kind of took me out of it, it's the Tyler Perry death. And what I mean by Tyler Perry death is when you think someone's dead, but they're really not. Okay, so you have... Grace losing it from finding out that Shannon is behind everything, the missing account money and, you know, uh, not being who he said he was and then walking in on him and another woman in her home. I think he even took out a mortgage on the house. She literally wailed on him with a baseball bat, then like dragged and threw his body in the basement. Then later on in the film, he's alive, but he has like two black eyes. And I'm like, what? the hell i mean this is coming from years of watching the haves and the have nots and seeing characters who should be either dead or critically injured up and out of the hospital in no time at all but this was just plain ridiculous okay and if i'm not mistaken we don't even know if shannon was killed when um he was shot at the end of the film. We don't know if he was killed or if he was arrested. And correct me if I'm wrong, because to be completely honest, I was kind of like mentally out of the movie when I saw that he had survived the baseball bat beating with only a couple of black eyes. I'm like, didn't she leave like a dent in the side of your head? So I don't, maybe the the, the wig protect, I don't know. Like, I really don't know. Um, My gosh. But at the end of the film, also, when um when Jordan arrested Sarah, a.k.a. Betty Mills, uh, Betty is the name of, Betty Mills is the real name of Sarah Miller, and Maurice Mills is the real name of Shannon DeLong, who was the photographer, if you will. But when, um, when, 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 when Jasmine discovered Alice, who was trying to escape from Sarah's home, and then she ended up being kidnapped, and then... Jordan went to save her and put Sarah in handcuffs. That was kind of sloppy that you said, don't go anywhere. And then she escaped. I felt like that was a bit too, you know, weird. Like, I mean, maybe it's because, oh, she's an old lady, so she can't escape. But she was kind of fighting you off for a little bit, dude, until you, you know, got her in the cuffs. So... I think that was a bit sloppy, but I get it for the most part. He was in an emotional state. You know, his wife, uh, he was checking in with her. I mean, her life was potentially on the line. But basically, um, after the whole, after Shannon's taken down, the police arrive and all the old ladies are freed because Sarah and, well, excuse me, Betty and Maurice's mother and son have been running this con for years. Uh, where they would take these older women and get their money and social security because um, Sarah's house is like a, you know, a place where she tends to the elderly and that's how she extorts all this money. So, um, yeah, it's, hmm. Then we get to the end of the film. Grace is free and reunited with her son. Uh, I, I kind of didn't mention the son that much. Uh, what's his name? Malcolm Waters. Is there really much to talk about? I don't know. But in any case, uh, except for the fact that he dragged the body from the basement. But Sarah is, or excuse me, uh, Betty is still on the run. She's still in a, she's in another state, possibly conning more women under a different identity. So the ending was a bit chilling. I know some people are like, yeah, hey, there should be a sequel. Not necessarily. I think that this movie 
did what it was created to do. Um, I don't think it was as terrible as people are saying. I mean, most people who complain about the movie is the same thing. Tyler Perry has a black woman who's, you know, uh, suffering and this and that. And yeah, it was kind of creepy seeing all those women, you know, tied up and chained in the basement of uh, Sarah's house. That, that was, that was really creepy. But, um, yeah, I'm still tripping over the whole, people can talk all they want about the wigs. I'm still tripping on Maurice, like only having a couple of black eyes from the baseball bat stuff. It reminded me of when Candace took the um, golf club and beat the hell out of Rocky a couple of seasons ago in the haves and the have nots. And he, she literally beat the side of his head in, but all we saw was barbecue blood, barbecue sauce of blood. And then he's in the hospital and then he gets out of the hospital and he's not scarred or anything. And it makes no damn sense. So it was okay. Um, not a movie. I don't think it was as great as people are saying, but that's just my opinion. I'm not really a fan of these thrillers anyway. Uh, I can't believe I brought myself to watch this movie twice. But I think that for a Netflix debut, could have done a bit better. I think five days of filming, was it... For the fact that it's your first Netflix movie, I would think a little more time and care could have been put into it. Again, not that I'm harping on it, but things like the wigs. I think that the cinematography, the cinematography was decent, but you know if you watch my reviews on things like the Oval and the Haves and the Have Nots, I pray, or even Sisters, I praise it based off certain things like, you know, the wide shots, the outside, and you know, where they take a wide shot of an outside location or, you know, the lighting in certain scenes. This really didn't wow me in the same way that the TV shows did. And you're probably wondering, well, it's a TV show versus movie. Well, yeah, typically movies are meant to look better than shows in most cases. But eh, what would I score this movie? It's hard because it's almost like you have to rate it two different ways. You have a scale in which you rate movies in general, but then you have a scale where you rate Tyler Perry movies because you know what to expect for the most part. It's a Tyler Perry film. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate video about fall from grace versus acrimony so be on the lookout for that but if i were to rank it on a scale of like one to ten i would probably say a four and again i I, it's not like the movie was terrible uh i think the acting for the most part was decent uh felicia richard and um uh cecily tyson or cecily i believe it's cecily tyson again correct me if i'm wrong but please don't be a you know jerk about it um they're, I mean, they're legends. The cast alone really did bring me into this film. But yeah, I think, I don't know if I'm ever going to watch again. Let me put it that way. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What did you think of A Fall from Grace? Uh, I, I really did it because Crystal Fox was finally in a starring role. And um, I'm glad that she was getting some shine. But I do hope that if Tyler Perry either does another Netflix movie or... Maybe based on how successful this movie is on Netflix, this could A, mean more movies are on the way. B, a Netflix series could be on the way. I don't know. That'll be interesting. I mean, literally, if you put the haves and the have nots and if loving you is wrong on Netflix, I would love that. But any, I, I digress. So let me know your thoughts on A Fall from Grace. Um, was it one of your favorite Tyler Perry films? Was it mediocre? How many times have you watched it? Was one time enough? Uh, I've been seeing, for the most part, positive comments on my uh, Instagram, Twitter, face, basically my social media in general. But this movie was kind of meh to me. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'm going to go ahead and record my A uh, Fall from Grace versus Acrimony video. But also, the one, the one, one of the biggest takeaways from this film, I will say this is that I felt like I couldn't trust anyone after this movie. It's like, yo, Grace's friend set her up on this date, and now it's like, yo, she's conning her, leading to her being arrested. Well, I mean, technically, I feel like maybe, just maybe, Grace would have either been arrested or put into that basement like those other women. So maybe jail was the best place for her in this situation. I don't know. 
But yeah, it is really messed up. Like you, you really can't trust anyone. That I feel like that's one of the biggest takeaways. Like, watch who you fall in love with, and don't trust anyone. So that that was a good takeaway. But thanks so much for tuning in, and I will talk to you all in the next video.